In today's world of high-speed connection, text messaging, and social networking, we often find ourselves searching for information. There are millions of blogs on the internet, news, sports, politics, and tech, but I bring it all together for you and present it in a relentlessly unconventional fashion. My name is Zinni Abraham, and this is The Blog Report. It's time now for news. All right. Excellent. We're with Fred Blackwell. Fred is the Assistant City Administrator of the yeah. City of Oakland. Uh -huh. And Fred, give us an update regarding the Oakland Army Base. Where are we? Where are we? Sure. Um, you know, after lots of years of planning and coming up with different development proposals for the um, Army base, we're really happy about where we are right now in terms of the development program. Um, as you know, uh, in the past there have been proposals around luxury car dealerships and casinos and maybe retail malls right. and things like that. Um, and what we've landed on is I think a program that is going to be uh, complementary of the Port of Oakland and really helping it to uh, maintain its competitiveness but also uh, produce I think a lot of good high paying jobs for Oaklanders. Um, there are really four core components to the development program. Uh, one is the development of a, a new brake bulk marine terminal. And for those who don't know, um, brake bulk uh, uh, commodities are things like iron ore, um, grain, and stuff like that that's basically uh, shipped in the bowels uh, of a ship, uh, which is really complementary and quite different from uh, the port's main activity out there in Oakland, which is, as most folks know, is containerized uh, uh, products. And so uh, this will be the um, only uh, deep water break bulk marine terminal uh, in Northern California. So we think it will be uh, very competitive and uh, be the impetus for a lot of import and export uh, coming through the port of Oakland and through the city of Oakland in general. Um, the second component to the program is about a million square feet of um, uh, logistics and, and warehousing uh, warehouse uh, and trade logistics warehouses essentially um, and there we're talking about things where uh, people who are either importing or exporting uh, through that new uh, break bulk marine terminal or through the port of Oakland in general will have new state-of-the-art facilities to do that work and we think that that also uh, will be quite competitive. The third dimension uh, to the program is actually rail uh, rail to serve the new warehouses and rail to serve uh, the new break bulk marine terminal. Rail is important because uh, there are important environmental justice benefits associated with it. When products come in uh, over, over from overseas or go out from uh, the country, um, the use of rail rather than truck traffic through West Oakland and the emissions that are created as a result of that is really important in terms of supporting the environmental justice things that are going on in West Oakland. Mm -hmm, and it's a more efficient way to transport goods and goods. And so we think that the rail stuff is going to be important. There'll be a rail component that supports those things that I talked about, but will also connect to uh, a new rail yard on the port side of the Army base. And that will basically mean that products will be able to come uh, from overseas uh, yeah. right to the break bulk right. marine terminal can get taken into these warehousing facilities and out through the rest of the country or the rest of the region, uh, in some cases, without ever having to be transported by, uh, by trucks. Yeah. Um, the fourth component, which is also, I think, important from an environmental justice standpoint, is in the northern part of the area, uh, there'll be uh, two new recycling uh, companies that will be located on the Army base. What's important about that is these are companies that will be relocated out of West Oakland. Uh, and so the notion of being able to both uh, put these uh, recycling companies in a place that is, we think, a lot more appropriate in terms of their use on the Army base, but also relieve the, uh, the neighborhood, the West right, Oakland right. community of the, uh, you know, the, um, the environmental negatives associated with having those things in the neighborhood is a perfect win-win situation. And so those four components are the key components of the program uh, from a, a bricks and mortar point of view. And we uh, anticipate being in the ground uh, on that by um, uh, December of 2013. Continue. So, you know, we anticipate all that for all that stuff to be in the ground by uh, December of 2013 and 
from a bricks and mortar point of view and an economic standpoint, we think it's really important work. Um, but that's not where we stopped. Um, the, another key component of this from, I think, my perspective and from the uh, perspective of the administration in general is that uh, it wasn't enough just to deal with the bricks and mortar. We thought that it was important uh, in a place like uh, Oakland where we have high levels of unemployment and right. uh, you know, residents who live through it, particularly in West Oakland, uh, years of disinvestment and neglect and have watched that land lay fallow for years, um, that there be uh, benefits associated this work to this work that accrue to them. Uh, and there are a few things that we're really proud of in terms of what we've negotiated with the uh, developers, CCIG and Prologis in getting this deal done. Mm -hmm. um, one is 50% uh, local hire, uh, both on the construction side and on the permanent job side of this project, and the 50% the on the operations of permanent jobs is something that is, I think, for the most part in this city, unprecedented it in is. terms of being yeah. able to negotiate something like that. And so we're really happy about it's that. It's usually like 20% or It's something. usually something lower than that. Um, yeah. It also, uh, we've also negotiated wall-to-wall -wall living wage, which means that all the jobs that will be created um, uh, during this development process and beyond uh, will be beyond minimum wage and will be at a livable wage, which is something that is fantastic right. and that you don't see. Uh, in a lot of projects. We have also negotiated uh, pretty significant provisions to make sure that people who have uh, criminal convictions mm -hmm. in some way uh, are able to get a fair shake at the jobs that right. are going to be right. created there right. by uh, having a provision called ban the box. Uh, and so for all those reasons, we're actually uh, not only excited about what's going to happen just from a physical standpoint, but we're excited about what we think is going to happen in terms of rising all, uh, lifting all boats. What is the where is the situation with the funding at? Because I was told by a couple of sources that the CTC, the California Transportation Commission staff, had a disagreement with the board. Uh, can you say some light on that? Uh? Sure. Um, there, about four years ago, the Port of Oakland actually was given a, a $242 million allocation or set aside from uh, uh, the CTC uh, to actually implement this project, uh, TCIF funds, uh, Transportation Corridor Improvement uh, Funds. Um, the, over the years, um, um, it's been very difficult to get the project off the ground. I mean, as I said before, there have been a lot of different uh, proposals that have been put out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's been difficult to get the sequel work going uh, to make sure that all the environmental reviews were in place before development could take place. And the land use plan that I just described has changed uh, quite a bit over the last uh, few years. For all of those reasons, I think the staff at the CTC uh, have become uh, both impatient uh, um, with the Port of Oakland and um, um, anxious about whether or not the city and the port uh, would be able to meet the December uh, 2013 deadline for getting the shovel in the ground. Hmm. Um, in large part, that is the reason why we have um, really spent the last I would say five months or so really hustling on the city side right. uh, to get a deal done, get it in front of council, uh, do all the stuff that we had to do from an environmental review perspective and get all the uh, development agreements in place. We were uh, told that uh, um, unless we had uh, CEQA in place and could um, identify in, in real terms where the private match was going to come from or uh, the match money in general was going to come from in order to uh, meet the TCIF requirements that we were really in danger of losing that money. Oh. Um, and all that's done now, so. We, we completed that, but there have been new um, uh, concerns raised from CTC staff about uh, whether or not the new project that we have and what's been approved by council actually fits within uh, the four corners of Oh my God, that's, that's a fresh concern. Uh, guidelines are, yeah. Uh, and so we just uh, uh, last week submitted a letter to CTC um, outlining uh, why we think this project does fit within the TCIF guidelines and why we think that there are uh, significant uh, trade corridor uh, benefits that would accrue to the state uh, by uh, advancing this project. And we hope to hear within the next uh, few days to week or so uh, what the verdict is on that. But if we're someone optimistic. listening wants to help as an advocate, what should they do? Write the representative? or? Um, I think at this point we're really kind of following the process at uh, sure. TCIF and making sure that just from a, a strict kind of guideline and policy standpoint that people understand that the state that we fit within that box. Um, we haven't yet kind of gone to a, 
uh, political strategy to uh, make sure that people in Oakland uh, um, notify their uh, representatives in Sacramento that they need to uh, be called <laughs> into action. Right. Um, right. But uh, if we uh, get a response from CTC that suggests that um, uh, that's what we need to do, that's what we will do. What's the website for the project for people watching if they want to find out more? Um, if you want to find out more, you can go to um, oaklandnet.com uh, uh, and uh, you can find uh, the, all the documents that I just described. We have a, a disposition and development agreement with the developer. There's a, a MOU up there with East Bay Mud because they're a neighbor. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we didn't impose uh, any undue harm on their project and the things that they were doing. Uh, there's a billboard agreement there. One of the ways that we're going to generate revenue is through the uh, putting up of new billboards and people will be able to review that. And the uh, policies that I referred to around uh, contracting and uh, jobs and community benefits are up there as well, as well as the CEQA documents. How many total jobs are we talking about? How many acres for the project? Uh, um, we're talking about probably uh, 2,500 uh, construction jobs mm -hmm. and probably another 3,000 permanent jobs on top of that. Uh, the acreage for the project is about 130 acres total at the Army base, but right now, just on the city side, we're talking about a little bit more than half of that. And uh, when do you, if we, when do you anticipate the sh everything starting to become built or if, you know operational? Yeah, um, your thing? as I said, you know, on the construction side, we anticipate having a shovel in the ground by December of 2013. Mm -hmm. um, there'll probably be a uh, three to five year build out um, of the because we're talking about new roads, right, new sidewalks, right. so basically sewers, a city within a city. Right. Yeah. And, uh, all the plumbing and infrastructure that will be necessary, and then only after that is complete, uh, where we be, will we be able to engage in the vertical development right. that will enable all these things that I'm talking about. So there'll be a lot of construction in the long construction phase before we actually activate the um, the operations. How is jobs. I think that's developer? about five years out. How is it working with the developer? Uh, the developer has been pretty good on this. Um, we've Excellent. been working really closely with uh, uh, Phil Tagami, mm -hmm. who's the principal at CCIG, and a guy named Mark Hansen, who mm -hmm. is the principal negotiator for uh, uh, ProLogis. Both of them are um, anxious to get started uh, and get the work underway. And I think both uh, also understood the importance um, uh, that we were placing on making right. sure that uh, uh, Oakland residents and businesses had a chance to benefit from this project. And with that, Bill, I know you got to get back to work, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Take me. Care. Cool.